<laughs> like 25 minutes. That's awfully lofty to think he could go 25 minutes. I think he could go 25 in 100 degree heat. I think he could make it 25 minutes. Running at 5 miles an hour? <sighs> yeah, 25 minutes and then vomit. That's what yeah. I'm giving him. <sighs> yeah, uh, Same time tomorrow. So, <laughs> so there's this office tomorrow. episode where it's like this guy, before he goes like on a, a 5K marathon, he, I guess... <clears throat> He's not very smart. He eats a whole bowl of like fettuccine alfredo. <laughs> I gotta it, get carbs. He's like time to carbo load, and then he finishes the race and he pukes, and he's like, "I've never drinking less water, need more fettuccine <laughs> alfredo to have in my entire life." Sundays I go work out at Dog Pound, and the gym's closed, so it's just me and three or four other guys. Just a couple of sweaty dudes touching each other's dicks. Yeah, yeah, got it. And uh, uh, one time Tyler wasn't there, and we got the cops. The the person who closed on Saturday. Uh, set the alarm, which they don't usually set the alarm. And so we went there, and we I have a key to the front door. I go right in, and the alarm's going off. And I'm like, I don't know how to turn this off. I'm like, I don't know if this is just one of those squealy things. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I don't know if this is one of those squealy things that's supposed to deter a thief like or not. Like you're Tyler, like, hey, bro. Well, he's passed out, like, drunk. Like, he wasn't there because he got, like, smashed the night before. Oh, shit. And so I'm like, well, I guess we're just going to see. So I took this siren that was making all the noise, and I put it under a whole bunch of couch cushions in the back so we didn't have to hear it because I couldn't turn it off. Yeah. Was it 30-minute response time? <laughs> uh, no. So we're not even 12 or 14 minutes into setting everything up. And here's like two cops in the parking lot. And I'm like, oh, I guess it is connected. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> so the cops come in. They don't check anybody's IDs. They don't do anything. They don't get a hold of Tyler because we can't get a hold of Tyler. Like, they don't do anything. And they're just like, carry on. Did you have and a they, key like to the door, though? Yeah. Well, then, I mean, maybe. Okay. But... Like, I'm yeah, like, I still, it's fucked up. <laughs> I, I'm surprised they didn't ask us to leave. Like, I'm surprised mm. the cops weren't like, I can't let, without talking to Tyler, we can't let you stay here. Well, they were probably looking around like, these meatheads got a key. Well, like, I, look at these fucking I'm standing hats. there barefoot, like in a tank top and workout shorts. Yeah, like, like, look at these I mean, fucking douchebags. Yeah. They belong here <laughs> together. <laughs> like, if we don't leave, they're going to ask us for gay sex <laughs> here in five minutes. <laughs> we got to go. Yeah. They're like, it's Sunday. They're hungover, too. They're like, let's get the fuck out of here. Let's go. <laughs> oh. Did I tell you, my, my sister has a friend where they had the vote yes sticker, like, you know, for... You were talking about this. I don't know if I told Dave. They literally... It was an abortion sticker? They Yeah, basically against abortion, like the vote yes or whatever. They literally yeah. had two crazy people call the police on them. The police get there, and they're like, this is it. Apparently, the, these people, these ladies, had told the cops that he was offensive or hateful. They had an obscene bumper sticker on their car, and it was literally vote yes, which in Kansas, a yes vote was to I know what it was eliminate. Yeah. Well, I know our listeners might not. Are we recording? No. Um, yeah, we are. I oh, well, look at that. Okay. <laughs> so a, yes, correct, a yes vote was to stop abortion from being legal in Kansas. And so well, they had some, it, was to, it, it was to put regulations on it. Yeah. And, but not stop it completely. Not stop it completely. Yes. But, yeah, so if somebody was saying they, they saw the vote yes sticker and they thought that was obscene. Yeah, the cop got there and apparently was just like, <laughs> this is my what time I, is being This wasted. is what I'm fucking talking about. This I know. Is what, this, this, this is this the great exactly, intro to the show this is because exactly this is what you like, want to talk about. How can you say that's obscene, but then the lady in Washington gets banned from the YMCA because a male is in the woman's locker room with his junk out, and that's not offensive uh, in front of children. Listen, everyone, everyone listen. I hope this makes the show. I'm listening. Everyone here. listen. This is not the beginning of the end. We are years in. We're experiencing it's it. It's almost fucking over. I mean, I just, there is no other way I can... My brain can comprehend the crazy bullshit that's happening. Right. Other than that. Yeah. I just, I, I can't even explain it. Like, I can explain a lot of stupid shit to myself and be like, okay, yeah, that's why. I'm out. Right. I literally have sat down and tried. I, I, I can't do it. Yeah. I don't know what to do anymore. You're, well, and, and luckily, most of the things that go that way, so like in that YMCA thing, it's going to be different there because they're state-funded. Um, or government funded somehow. It's, it's 
but it's not an excuse. No, 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 no. It's not an excuse. But luckily, once most businesses take such an extreme approach on something like that, the business suffers severely yeah, in the business. following weeks or months. Well, literally, did you see what happened? So there was like this big hearing and all these people came out like I don't remember. It was 30, 35 people came out in support of this old lady. And then the mayor came out and was like, no. Like, he's at the meeting and gives this whole speech about, no, I'm a hero. I'm transgender. This is wrong. She should be banned. And I'm just thinking, (laughs) someone should shoot this motherfucker. That's what should happen. Right. It's just, it's literally, it's insane. And I don't even, I am at the point where I can't comprehend it. And I don't know what to do about it. Like I, was, I feel like I can. There's nothing I can do anymore. I was reading through the article, and ultimately they terminated the lady's membership from the YMCA because of her disrespect towards the transgender person. They, who cares that the transgender person was watching girls undress to use the restroom? This lady's with remarks his, with his junk out. Yeah. Well, the article the I read. The article I read said he was wearing thing. a woman's swimsuit. Yeah. So uh, there, there's nothing left to the imagination if a guy wears a woman's swimsuit. That's for sure. Yeah. So the article. So the stuff I had read and heard was that he literally in the locker room before that was just walking around with his shit out. Right. Right. Like I mean, I miss. I mean, I wish I could go back in high school and just be like, you know what? I'm going to go to the women's locker room and just walk around with my shit out, see what happens. Right. What? Expelled. Yeah. Go on. You're out. You can't come back. Right. That's what happens. And you're going to get committed to a loony bin. And that's what should fucking happen because you're mentally unstable. Right. Now, now one person that feels uncomfortable has to be given rights so that 50 other people can feel uncomfortable and not them. Right. Yeah. That's so that. In, it, she was bringing up valid concerns of if you are going to have transgender people in the locker room, you need to provide a place for people to change clothes that don't want to be in view of this transgender person. Yeah. And and they they you need to provide signage saying that it's a possibility that a transgender person was in there. And the YMCA's reply was – there's plenty of rainbow posters and pride flags around the YMCA. You should have known. Insanity. <laughs> Insanity. Just, it, insanity. You know what I think they should start doing? Like if they really want to go with it and say, okay, we're going to let transgender people, we're just going to market women and we're going to market men, okay? And if you're transgender, you can go in. If you're a transgender male and you want to be a woman, you can go in there. But it needs to be post-op. You've got to be post-op. If you're willing to hack that motherfucker off and do the deal, you can go in there. Right. Okay? Because then there's no confusion. Like, that son of a bitch is gone. If you're a woman and you want to go in the mail and you want to have some, I don't know what they do. I want to be honest. I don't know. Is it like a thumb? Like, they cut off your thumb and then they sew it down there? And then they say... Maybe it's a I, cadaver. I don't. Maybe you're giving that thing one more ride. I don't know what the <laughs> fuck you're doing. I don't know. But you know, and it's different from men. Like if if a woman is trans and wants to go to the men's locker room at 18 years old, like in high school, all the dudes are like, "Yeah, man, let's see it." Yeah, you know, it'll stand a chance. Yeah, it's. It, I just. It's completely fucking insane. Yeah, is what it is. Yeah, it, it's completely. You know, their whole their whole deal is. Well, we have to work on inclusion. We have to. We want inclusion for everyone. Okay. Well, so if this one person wants inclusion, these ten people want inclusion at the YMCA, and they go in there. Now there's a hundred and fifty people that, that are forced to change for the ten. That are forced to change. So now these a hundred and fifty people want inclusion. Yeah. Because they don't want to be part of this. Yeah. It's basic math. Well, I mean, the the Democrats are fucking up the economy so bad. I mean, I, you know, you can almost transfer it to numbers. I mean, it's like fucking econ 101. It, the difference is 140, people. Figure your shit out. This isn't a transgender issue. This is just an issue of an adjustment in sex. This is a market correction in sex. <laughs> yeah, market correction. <laughs> From now on, it's going to be. And that's why I say if you are going to do it, I bet people would be okay with post-op because then – 
I mean, the real fear is the pedophiles and the creepos, right? Like, right. I have a daughter. That's my greatest fear. Right. You know, that someone's going to take advantage of her, right? Well, if the son of a bitch has done whacked it off and you can't tell anyway, mm, okay. I don't know. I mean, I don't like it. I don't like it either. The, uh, the funny almost, thing is... I'm saying it almost tongue-in-cheek. Like, right. you know, if you have the balls to cut your shit off, then... The, the funny thing Maybe is we're going, pass. we're going straight to the device, divisive inclusion, and we're totally skipping over the fact that, like, a majority of men's restrooms in America don't have baby changing stations. Like, if we want inclusion, let's make it to where the dad can change the baby's diaper in the bathroom and not have to give the baby to the mom. Well, right? Like, so, dude. I'm going to push back a little bit because I have a lot in a restroom of, where I haven't seen that. Maybe it was like five years ago. There's a lot of them in the men's. In the stall, yeah, I, I change I, a baby. Everywhere, everywhere I see I a ton that are still missing them. You're you're probably right. And I, I've changed when Layla was a baby. I've changed her in a men's, you know, right. in the deal, right? You know, and then, I mean, was in there for an hour, you know, just cleaning shit off the mirror. Just, yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah, basically. I mean, yeah, squirt. Yeah, I mean, there's there's I so mean, many there's other. Wreck, let's be honest. There's so many other areas where you could push for inclusion without having to go to the divisive side of things. Mm-hmm. You're gonna have, you're, you're gonna have fruits and nuts and flakes creating these kinds of crazy stories all the time. What makes it, uh, what makes it really wild is when you have governments coming up with wild sightings on them, right? When, right. you, when you have governments taking crazy, wild stances on it. Um, um, for instance, when you've got Joe Biden praising Kansas for passing their... Ex- extremely confusing bill that no one really knew what the fuck it was saying. A no like mint yes and a yes mint no yeah. and, and all of this stuff, right? Yeah. And, and I've got several friends that live in Kansas that actually voted... That they are not pro-abortion, but they voted no on the bill, and and again a no meant yes, right? So um, uh, they they are not pro-abortion. However, they are pro to the idea of women having the uh, availability to do it, right? And so they they would even like one of them I was reading on social media. He had mentioned that. You know, he voted to keep things the way they were, not because he's pro-abortion, but because he's pro-women being able to have the choice. However, he is greatly sickened at how excited people are to kill babies. Like the celebration parties that went on and everything else was like, it's, it's kind of sickening. It went from safe, legal, and rare to like... Ah oh, man, it makes me feel like God. Like it, that one lady said it. Uh, it. What was her name? It went from safe, legal, and rare to the day after pill. Yeah, is like I mean. Well, and it just. I mean, <laughs> it was. People voted no because of fear. They thought of immediately there's going to be none. Yeah, which is what isn't what it was going to be. I mean, we. I don't understand what happened to TV and commercials and ads when you can literally just twist things around and lie about what can or can't be done to manipulate people to vote in the way that you want things to come out. Right. I don't understand where I, I, I hate government overreach, but how is there not a government program that says, you know, you can't lie like this. You can't highlight this, this, and this, and then turn it into another sentence. If you're going to advertise, you have to say everything that's in it or everything that's not in it and actually give the facts so that it's not confusing for people. Because people will not, like, I will go online and read things for myself right. and decide what the truth is. 75% of people in this country are lazy and stupid, and they will literally, whatever flashes on their screen or flashes on the phone or flashes on whatever, they just take it and run with it at 100 miles an hour and think they're right. This is what we need. Right. And it's like, I mean, how did we, how did we get here? 
when did the insanity really set in? I feel like it's only been in the last three years. Like there was, there was always a gradual incline. Like in the nineties, you know, it was yeah same sex marriage and black and white marriage. And it just was like this, not that, and I'm not saying anything. I don't care if you're gay, get married. If you're black and want to marry a white woman, no one cares, okay? Right, right, right. But there was always this gradual incline of what has happened. And then, like, in the last three years, it's, off. it's just taken off like a fucking rocket ship. Well, I think. Without any knowledge, without it, it's just it's just people spout bullshit all the time, and none of it's true. Well, I think what happens is with COVID and with all of the unrealistic rules that were made and all of the power trips that politicians were on and rule makers were on, I think what it did was tell them that you were, uh, that, that they have the ability to make crazy rules and nobody really knows how to stop them. Um, so they figured out how to manipulate people. They not, I don't know. I don't even know if it's manipulation. Like they can just flat tell you something is something that it isn't. And there's not a big enough uproar of people that are arguing against it or disagreeing with it. And so it just becomes accepted as, okay, this is the way it is now. Right? Like when, when by definition we're in a recession, but now we're changing the definition of what recession is. You know, it's it's two quarters of negative GDP is what yeah, the, the prior term, definition yeah. was, right? Yeah. Well, now we've had two quarters of negative GDP, and now it's like, well, we're not negative enough, right? Yeah. So, so now we're, we're changing the definition of, of what a recession is. We talked about is. it earlier. They're lying. Yeah. They're just lying. And, and so they've realized through COVID that we can – flat lie to the public and give them some absolute bullshit answer about it. And we, th- it doesn't matter if they believe us because there's not enough people that disagree with this that know how to organize themselves well enough to do anything about it. That's the biggest problem is, is you and I can both, you and I and a hundred thousand other people can all say that, no, this is wrong. But if we can't all agree on a way to, to disagree with it in unison, then there's nothing we can do to stop the government from what they're doing. Well, I don't even think it's disagree in unison. I think it's how do we organize together to make a difference or make it stop. Right. And that's the everyone's they're doing a very good job of pushing the narrative of letting everybody pursue being right instead of pursue having the right outcome. That you get, like, you may have an idea that says that, like, let's say we disagree on something and we want to work together to topple it. Well, they, they've done a good enough job of getting you and I to, instead of just agreeing on what's the right outcome and that's toppling the thing that we disagree with, it's instead it's, well, I want to be right. I want it to do it my way and you want it to do it your way. And so now we're like arguing over which way is the right way and we never Semantics. can. Yeah. And and so we never can come to an agreement on how to topple the thing, and so the thing never gets toppled. Um, how, well, um, let me ask you a question. This is not where I thought the show was going to go today. Uh, what what do we do about it? How do you how do you change? You, you got to change the culture of people to realize what's going on, and to realize that it may be a little messy, and you may disagree with how to achieve the out overcome you know, overcome the objective and achieve the end goal but as long as you are still in pursuit of that it's okay and a prime example of that is going to be like trump right trump was very good at exposing fraud trump was very good at um uh blowing whistles and highlighting massive areas that were inefficient or corrupt. But the media and the, the the left did a very good job of getting everybody to argue over Trump's words that he said, right? We were able to completely forget what he was doing as far as exposing corruption in the government and everything else. And, and we were able to argue over, you know, 
is he a racist because he said grab her by the pussy? And and here we've got all of these people who agree that he's doing a good job, but now we're arguing over the fact that is that a racist comment or a sec? Not I said racist. Is it, it a is sexist, sexist? Yeah. Yeah. Is it a sexist comment or is it not? There. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and, and so they're, they're very good about getting us to argue about bullshit things and not push towards the end goal. So you're telling me, so obviously most of the country knows that the media is divisive via one side or the other. The, the, but here's the problem. Everyone will say the media is divisive when the media is divisive on something they disagree with. I said both ways. But – Everyone is quick to ignore how divisive the media is when the media is saying something that they agree with, right? So, like, if you're going to hold the media accountable, you have to hold them accountable even when they're speaking to, to things that you agree with. Yeah. You still have to be able to spot the division they're creating even if they're saying something that you also say yourself or you also agree with. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So they're divisive both ways. Which is what I just said. So my my point is, if the media is divisive both ways, right, and they are covering for each other's sides, how do we as a people get? Oh man, it's such a complicated issue. How do we get the government back in the people's hands? I mean, first off, I would say term limits. Right off the get go is how you have to do it. Honestly, where I think it's going to go is I think it's a whole new government. So you're talking Civil War, new government, like the whole thing starts over? It, it's sad to think about it and it's kind of scary to think about it in those terms. But I think there is so much corruption in our current government. And there are so many people that know it's corrupt but don't want to give up their free ride or all their perks or all their incentives that when an outsider comes in, even if they agree with what the outsider's doing, there is so much energy to continue promoting corruption that an outsider does not stand a chance. It would take – Yeah, like, that's why Trump has fought the battle he's had to fight because he was – a whistleblower, an outsider, right. who was not a politician, that came in and said, "These people are doing this wrong. These people are doing this wrong. These people are doing." They're, he literally came to the people and said, "They're exploiting you. Yeah. Do you not see it?" Right. And that's when even the Republicans would not stick up for him or take his side because they are part of the status quo. They don't want to lose their meal ticket. Yeah, right. exactly. They're yeah. all part of the status quo, and it's all bullshit. So establishing term limits, like even if term limits happen, it would happen in a way that does not do a complete changeover, a complete 180. No, but if it's if it's a six-year max on everybody and but, it's 33% are changed out, then that means every three years, 33% or every two years, 33% are changed out. But the problem with that is every two years you have 33% of people coming in that are influenced by the 66% that are still already in the system and they know how to work the corruption. So that's the big problem I see with term limits. I, I, I agree. I don't disagree that term limits would be effective. I think term limits would have prevented where we are, but I think it takes much more than that to correct the course of where we've ended up. Well, so so say there is a giant course correction. Say there is a war, a civil war, right. or some kind of government standoff between, you know, A and B. Yeah. How you still are in the same predicament as I mean, so, so say half say so say half of one side leaves and half of the other side leaves, you're still stuck with the same corruption. How do you stop the corruption from the beginning? Honestly, and and you know, I'm not a historian. There's no right answer. There, there's no right answer. I'm not a historian. I'm not a I'm not a political buff or anything else. But what I see is a very realistic possibility: is a version of a civil war where the landmass of the U.S. ends up getting split up, to where you have the left creating their own country and the right creating their own country, because. 
and, and that's going to be driven by the people, not by the government. The government doesn't want to want that to happen. No, right? the, people they want will to keep- go, the people will go where they want to be part of. And there's already a migration now. I mean, we talk about people going from California to Texas and to Florida and going from California to Idaho. And we talk about people from going to New York to Florida. Well, there are also people that are moving from Texas to California. Right. And there are people moving from Ohio to the East Coast somewhere. Right. You know, and and so what what I see happening is is that continuing on and then something affecting to where you have less of a national government and more of a state government and people are going to gravitate towards the states that hold their values similar to how they do now. Well, you mean similar to how it was always originally intended. Intended. So it, right. you know when it first started out the states had their own government and then once enough states once there were enough states they said hey we need some help to hold the states together so let's start a federal government we'll all chip in a little bit but then somewhere along the line the federal government realized oh we've got power right we can start dictating to them what we want yeah which <laughs> It's unbelievable to me when I when you sit back and think these fifteen hundred influential people are running the whole country. Right. Fifteen hundred people are dictating what's going on. Yeah. And people are stupid enough to be like, Yeah, I want to be on their side. No. Right. They want money, power to control everything you do. And you want to side with them? Right. No. You want to be independent. People are... That's the whole... The whole point of this country was, we're leaving a dictatorship. I know it's a monarchy. Mm-hmm. But to to govern ourselves. Right. And literally, in 200 years, it has gone to hell in a handbasket. Right. That's all it took. I mean, is because people are just sick. People just can't... People just can't survive. Well... I mean, I just... It, I, I think you've got. Mind. I think you've got a significant majority of people in the U.S. And I say majority because I think it's more people in the U.S. than not that still trust the government to a high level, and they are very, very easily influenced and persuaded by what the government is saying and what media is saying. A uh, prime example of that: Austin and I were driving to a service call today, and uh, we're in the inner city, and we're by a very, very popular bus stop. And 80%, 85% of the people at the bus stop were wearing masks. Mask mandate's been over for a very long time. Mask mandate carried on for a long, like the, the federal mask mandate tried to say it was still required on public transportation for a while, and even that's not in place anymore. And there are still a significant majority of these lower class inner city residents that are still wearing masks. Is it because they're afraid or because they've been convinced by the government to be afraid? It's conditioning by the government that you trust us, you do what we say and all of this. And so those are your people that will never see through. And, and I mean, it's a large population of people um, and, and each one of them gets a vote and they live in higher populated areas like inner cities, right? So um, they're, they're, they're easily convinced by the government that this is the way we should do things. And so that population is not going to be toppled or not going to be swayed by the, the idea of a new, uh, a new person coming in with a different perspective that has a lot less trust in government and a lot more – uh, accountability back onto the individual. Well, I, th- I think you're 100 percent correct. What baffles me is, you know, you say you were in a low income area, which I'm sure is probably uneducated. You know, I'm sure it's half on welfare, half not. I'm sure a lot of those people have jobs and are doing the best they can. And then I see the same kind of action from 25 year old college students that are educated, that come from good families, that believe the same stupid shit. Right. I mean, I just... The way that the government 
has been able to manipulate what people think and kill basically independent thinking. Mm-hmm. I can't think for myself. Right. I mean, it, it astonishes me. And it's not... You know, I shouldn't say it's just on government. I've been thinking a lot lately about the generation before us and the and the generation before them. We talk on this show, we had an entire show about raising your kids and you being the educator in their lives. Mm-hmm. They still go to school, but it's the responsibility is still on you to guide them. Right. And it pains me to think that um the generation before me and the generation before them, they were not training young kids to be independent thinkers. Right. To not trust, you know, they were saying trust the government, basically. Do this. Like, my parents weren't that way. Right. But, right. you know, I know a lot of them were. You know, hey, just rely on the government. I mean, where, you know... The fault doesn't lie just on the government. It lies on the laziness of people to train their children yeah, and to teach them right from wrong, what to do, how to be independent, how to be great. Right. And for all those people that say, oh, no, we have to join together and be part of a cooperative and we have to be, you know, basically a Marxist or socialist country and we have to... That's not the fucking way to go. Look around the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those countries don't make it. They are dumpster fires. Right. Okay? The greatest countries in the world Well, and, and mostly, an independent thinker says to look around the world. That's right. But they are not being told to look around the world. No, of course not. They are being told this is the way. And they that type of person also has doesn't have a very long-term vision, right? They think... They think massive shifts can happen in just a matter of a year or two when it comes to like the nation's course. And so um, they're very susceptible to believing what the politicians are saying when, you know, I can balance the budget or, you know, you get your Obama phones or, you know, whatever, whatever the case was. Yeah, they get hurt and then they go to the hospital and they're like, I'd like to get cashed my Obamacare. Are you fucking kidding me? Right. I literally knew a kid. um he was a great friend of mine, okay? Good guy, okay? Literally said to me one April, hey, I have to go down and get signed up for Obamacare or they're going to take all this money out of my taxes. And I said, I almost said his name, dude, are you fucking kidding me? Right. Like, he has voted for this. He has thought this is how it goes. Yes, this is the way. We're going to do this. You had to sign up for that. That would have been two Novembers ago for you. Right. Right. They're they're taking your part of what you should have been paying in for the medical program out of your taxes because you didn't sign up for the health care that you voted for. Two years ago. Two fucking years ago. Right. So I'm looking at him, and he just has this blank look on his face. I mean, I remember it vividly. Like, at that moment, this has probably been, I mean, this had to have been 10 years ago. Right. I, I vividly remember thinking they have fooled these kids yeah. into voting for them, promising them all this stuff yeah. and lying to them. And they have no clue what they're even voting for. And the biggest issue with that is that's what happens when you have universities and media outlets mm-hmm. that are able to write their own history. And, yes, and, and manipulate history. Right. And so you're like you're seeing it with the J6 thing, with the January 6th thing. Which no one's watching because no which, one gives a fuck. Which no one's watching. However, they're not doing it because people are watching it. They're literally writing history. Yeah. They want this to go down in the history books the way that they want it to go down, not actually the way that it happened. Yeah. And unfortunately, we aren't unified enough in America to disagree with it. So it's going to happen. It's going to go down in the history books the way the Democrats want it to go down in the history books. You have that repeated over and over and over. And and, and it really makes you think, too. Like, once you see him doing it with J6, it makes you think, like, we're all told the story about, like, Abraham Lincoln being shot in a theater, right? Is that how it really happened? What actually happened? Yeah. Right? And I'm not going to say, like, I'm not... 
I'm not going to go on the conspiracy side of things and say like that didn't happen. But if we're able to literally watch politicians and media outlets write history for the way they want it remembered, then how do we trust anything that's happened in the past? And in any of the history, we were taught in the same schools that are now beginning more and more corrupt as time goes on. How corrupt were they when we were there? And what, you know, all those battles that we had to memorize in social studies in elementary school and, and all these arbitrary dates and all these names and all of this stuff. What was the purpose of that? Were we, were we having to memorize those battles, but not other battles? Well, I got them because I don't remember any of that shit. Right. <laughs> I got there. But asses. I got a calculator in my pocket. <laughs> what, you know, I mean, what really, what really drives me crazy is so say say all that stuff is true, right? And right. say say part of the past is manipulated, and say the past or the the present now is being manipulated for people of the future, and as a independent thinker i can say i i believe that and i think okay this is what's actually happening i don't know what to do about it right right what do i do do i just function on in society and try to have joy and peace because if i do that i'm lying to myself and i'm not doing anything for the next generations or do I stand up and try to say something, even though realistically my voice isn't going to be heard? It, you know what I mean. Or do I go get my gun and I, you know, do something crazy? Some. This is hypothetical. I, yeah. Listen, everyone, <laughs> for that's trying to arrest me for something stupid. I'm just, yep. I'm just playing devil's some, advocate here. Some people are going to choose the gun route. Some people are going to choose the route of. Uh, getting your house in order before you can get your town in order and everything else. We've talked about that in previous episodes, that you can't make an impact nationally until you can make an impact statewide. Oh, d- you can't make an impact statewide until you can make an impact countywide. I was at a planning and zoning committee la- meeting last night till 830. Don't get me started on that shit. Right, right. I mean, it's, when, you, when you think of corruption and everyone says it starts at the local level, you're fucking damn right it, it does. absolutely does. It starts right? with your local mayor. Yeah. It starts with his buddies. Yeah. It starts with his buddies buying property that you can now help him get. Yeah. Corruption literally starts at the base level of everything. We, we have a... It we starts a, at the DMV, starts at the, at the local police. It starts at... I mean, it is, it is literally everywhere yeah. that you turn. And it... The reason I was bringing that up before is it it feels like a if you want to try to make a difference or you want to try to, you know, do something great, it's literally a weight on you. Yeah, all the time, and there are there there comes a time when people just can't handle it, and I think literally we're living in that time when there's about to be. I mean, something's going to happen. I don't know what it is. Right. But people can, you can feel it in the air. Like when you go, when you go to a Walmart and you see some dude losing it at a Walmart, like you can feel it. Like people are <laughs> all on, people are on the fucking edge right now. Right. I mean, they are literally thinking, man, one of these days I'm going to kill every one of these motherfuckers in this room. Right. And it's just, it's palpable Yeah, is what it yeah. is. It's just, it's, we're living in such a weird time, man. That's where, that's where like the listeners of this show have a, a big chance to make change. If you're listening to this show, it's because you want better for yourself. Mm-hmm. You want to create your own company and everything else. Well, to do that, you're going to have to be a leader of the people in your company. You're going to have to learn how to get a group of people who come from all different backgrounds and all different walks of life to march to the beat of your drum. And to do that, you've got to make sure that your drum is beating the right beat and you've got to use your words and your actions to get them to follow you. Um, If you are successful in that, this is why a lot of business owners eventually end up in politics is because if you can successfully build a business and it's a successful business, then you have a lot of the traits that would actually be very effective in politics. You can rally people around. You can fundraise. You can you can get people of all different walks of life to come to agreements on certain things. And so, you can. It's it's easy to 
become a city council member and realize the power you have when you come from a successful business. Yeah. You know, it's easy to get there. Yeah. And then it's easy to take the next step. Right. And it's easy to take the next step after that. Right. Like Mitch said, if you want to be a difference maker in your community and your business is successful, if you really want to do that, the next step is easy. You can do it. Yeah, absolutely. But you got to have the heart to do it, and it's hard. You got you got to have the heart. You're going to take some some heat. Or right? be dead inside. Yeah, either which, <laughs> either way. Um, you got to let the uh, you got to let the de- destination be the inspiration for where you're going. Um, you can't let the battles of today weigh on you. You have to keep looking, you know, farther ahead in the future as to where you want to end up. But um, I mean, ultimately. To, to course correct where America is heading, it would almost take like a great reset of the politicians that are in place. And I don't know how you would effectively do that. I don't think you – like the easy thing is to say, oh, they all need to go. We need all new ones in there, right? Like, okay, yeah, I agree with that. However, that would be like one of the weakest moments in American history when you take literally – it, it, at the yeah. snap of a finger. It's, it's easy for Russia and China to say, okay, hey, send all the bombs now. Yeah, chaos yeah. is going to happen right now. They have no order, right? Yeah. So it, it would probably be some form of, of accelerated hybrid thing of like what you were talking about, term limits, and, and it affects it in three phases or three different branches of the government, and, and it, it happens – it, it happens fast enough to where the corruption can't remain, but it also happens slow enough that we remain safe as a nation. Um, the other thing that it would I- immediately take, and I don't know how you do this, is you would have to 100% eliminate lobbying. Lobbyists would have to be out the way, yeah. out, like completely gone. Just like we've talked about, you shouldn't be able to advertise pharmaceuticals. Same thing. They yeah. should outlaw pharmaceuticals. They should outlaw lobbyists. It should all be fucking gone. Right. All of it. Right. Except it, for the NRA. Um, <laughs> except for the, <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the, the one, one of the things that I've often thought about is wouldn't it be really cool that one of the rules of being a politician is that nobody knew you were a politician? If our politicians were um, unbeknownst to the public until after the term was over because then it's impossible for them to be swayed or influenced. How because would, How would you vote them in? I don't know all that yet. What are you doing? But – but stop it. And, and, and <laughs> this is a pipe dream. <laughs> this, this isn't an idea. This is just like what, what, Fantasy. how, yeah, like how cool would it be? Like, how easy would it be to be the job of a politician when you knew that you could make the right call without having to suffer the recourse of upsetting a large group of people? Or you wouldn't have to turn away a lobbyist's, you know, million dollar opportunity for you to vote a certain way. Because nobody knew that you were even on the vote. Well, so if you have term limits, you're not worried about voting a specific way to stay on because you have a deadline. Like you have a timeout. So then all of the voting, if there's no lobbyists and there's term limits, then you get elected on who you are and who you say you're going to be. And then your vote is not – it's hard to vote blind. Like you don't, you can't see how someone voted, but then people could just say, "Oh, I'm a Republican and I'm going to vote this way," and then just not vote that way. Right. Well, and that happens a lot already. Right. Well, not as much as if, if like if you didn't know who Manchin was and he wasn't being pushed and paid out of Schumer's pocket to vote for, I mean, it would be easier for him to say stand up, stand his ground, and say, "No, I'm not doing that, dude." Right. Right. You know, but the, it's a catch twenty two. You know, I mean, how do you trust them if you can't see what they're voting for? Right. But if there's term limits, are you really that worried about it? Because they're going to be out soon enough. Yeah. Well, so the problem I mean, is that lobbyists would just change their tactic, right? We because don't have lobbyists. I just we just said if you don't have lobbyists and you if you have term limits and no lobbyists and your votes are blind. Yeah. I mean that. I mean we're it, we're just speculating here. I mean, yeah. But that would be I guarantee it'd be better than what the fuck we got now. Right. Right. You know? Yeah. The, the lobbyists wouldn't know who to pinpoint, not to mention that there wouldn't be any. But then on top of that, um, yeah. You know, it, and then you would have to find some way to, 
you'd have to find some way to control the media without regulating the media. And I don't know exactly how you do that, right? Well, the first thing you do is when someone lies, there is an actual fine and an actual court and an actual Department of Justice that stands up and says... Not just a retraction? Yeah. You know, you lied, you're gone, and your fine is X. CNN is on the verge of... If they have to pay out two or three more lawsuits, if this one that Trump has filed against them, they're going to be bankrupt. Yeah. The CNN Plus that they started lasted two days. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because okay, they didn't have any money. Right. Because they've had to pay that young college kid. They've had to pay um, the kid that self the written house. They've had, I mean, they've had to pay all these people because literally they were like, nope, guilty. Right. right. Nope, terrorist. Nope, white supremacist. Yeah. Yeah. The, Finding some way to regulate that without adding government, right? So it's it's easy for somebody like a Republican typically wants a smaller government, but you it's it's I, I find it funny that how many Republicans will like cry for media regulation. Yeah, it's like you want more government on that. Like you can't you can't you know cry one thing but then beg yeah, yeah beg for it in another area. So how do you regulate the media without adding government? Well. You find a way to educate Americans to not buy into the media bullshit, and then it self-regulates. By being a media. Uh, no, <laughs> no, not, not – I mean, like, how, how, if you're not media, how do you get to all of them? It, there's, there's also other minute things, too, where it's like – it can even come down to – it's going to sound silly, but like lens choice. There's certain lens choice that cameramen can use to make certain people look closer to other people. So even just the view into a situation, the lynch choice can even ob- obscure what's going on. That sounds like really in the weeds. Yeah. But I don't know. I mean, I don't really see them being like, oh, you got to make for sure it's 35 millimeter or whatever. Well, but it's like it can kind of be like if you know what you're doing with the lens, you can really kind of obscure like the space and how things are happening. Right. Like if you're using like a telephoto lens, it makes – Maybe something that's not really intense because you're stacking things up, like if there's a riot or something. It makes everybody right. look closer together at the riot that's at the distance because you're so far away. Yeah. Well, and so people people do stuff like that all the time. Well, and, and you see that, and, and having the ability to spot that is key as an individual, as a, as anybody in, who wants to be successful just in their own. It's right. like your buddy that caught a two pound bass and then holds it out full arm's length, and he's like, "Look at my six pounder." Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's perspective. Um, we talk about that, perspective all the time. That New York Post article that I was reading about the the lady banned from the YMCA. Um, I'm I'm pulling it back up here because I want to find exactly what words were on there. And maybe there's a thing of like going for those news companies. Like, okay, we got to make for sure we're getting a drone angle, we're getting this angle, getting a wide angle to where it's like from the inside out. You know, there was a. It's funny you bring that up. Um, I watch, you know, they bring those little clips up on um, Facebook all the time. There's one that a guy's in a white Lamborghini, and he pulls up and stops, and this lady slams into him. Yeah. Okay, and this lady gets out, and she runs up there, and she's screaming at him, you hit my car, you hit my car. And this goes on for like, I think it was like a month. And, you, they and would have this a dead on stop. There. Yeah, he's at a dead stop, and she's yelling, you know, and they're they're telling her she's a Karen, you know, oh, you're white privilege, you hit my car, and this and that, and just make it look bad. Well, then they come out with a video a month and a half later mm-hmm. that literally she is at the previous stoplight, and he cuts her off to go in front of her at the light, and it looks like his bumper hits the front of her car, yeah, and he drives away. And then stops at the next place to stop. And, so and all you're she's like, the after fuck effect. you, dude, and hits him. Yeah. When it lo- in yeah. all reality, yeah. he did hit her and leave the scene of a fucking accident. Right. And then tries to smear her mm-hmm. for a month before any of this other stuff comes out. Right. And right. that's the problem with media, media manipulation mm-hmm. and things that are going on. That, I mean, when I saw it, I thought, I, I literally thought, look at this fucking bitch. Yeah. Look at her. I mean, just all over this dude. And literally, it, it took me longer. I had to go back and realize, I mean, it was like four months, and then this other thing shows up, and I'm like, holy shit. Yeah. This guy clips her car. Yep. 
doesn't stop, drives off. I'd have done the same thing. I'd have run that yeah. in my truck. I'd have monstered right over his ass. And, and so that's that's the challenge we have with all media is both left – like. It's it's hard to find a central based media, and the reason why is because central based media isn't flashy, and we're drawn to flashy, right? We want the we want the division creating story. That's what we're drawn to. That's what Hollywood's built off of, right? They want conflict and everything else. And so here in this New York Post article, um, the the woman that was banned from the YMCA, um, it, there's a line in here that said she had been a member of the pool facility for 35 years. And the first thing I thought of when I saw that line was, I don't fucking care. Like, as much as I want to hate the YMCA in this article because it sounds like they're wrong, this article is written in a, in a way, by, by putting that line in there, the article is written in a way that is trying to get you on her side and make you hate the YMCA. They're trying to make you feel, oh, she's there for 35 years. She must be a good person. Well, no matter how long she's been there, if her actions were justified, they were justified. If her actions were wrong, they were wrong. Yeah, if she's so, been there one year or 50, it, it shouldn't it matter. matter, right? It shouldn't matter. And, and so when you spot things like that, um, uh, that's where – and, and these, these, uh, these quotes and these things are spot out with, like, pictures to really draw attention to them. The next picture down – says that this is a quote from the woman that was banned, says, I asked if he had a penis, and he said that it was none of my business. So well, then why drawing, is it out, motherfucker? They're, they're <laughs> drawing you to that quote. They're trying to make you rally behind this woman and hate the YMCA. And, um, and, and, and for all I know, maybe it's 100% true. I just don't know. The problem is our trust in the media is so low that – we we have to hold ourselves accountable to even when an article that comes out like that that makes you initially it makes you want to say like yeah right on right well that's well, the same media that you were just saying is out of control and unregulated and and well it, so people like us think the media is out of control oh absolutely okay super liberal nutbags think the media is giving them the truth Right. They think that everything that they spout... Not, not all media. They don't think Fox News is giving them the truth. No. But they think all the... Fox News is 10% of the media. So they, right. they think the other 90% of the media is giving them the truth all the time. So you're telling me by saying that, that the only people that are doubting that are us. Are people that are independent thinkers. And that doesn't, that doesn't help bring fact... To media, right? Because the small number that are doubting media are the ones that are questioning. That doesn't help us. Right. That doesn't help us get back to how it was in the '80s when people were. That's what I feel like we're reporting more of the facts than they are now. Listen, there was. I'm, I guarantee there were 15 percent bullshit back I then. I don't even think it was then. Like, I, okay, 70s, the, whatever. The biggest. I, I think the media has been corrupt ever since there's been a media. The big difference now is we have so much social media that we can see things from private sides and private optics and other people's cell phone views and other angles mm -hmm. and other opinions that it gives us even more of a reason not to trust the media. I don't, I, I don't know if they were ever trustworthy. I, I'm, I, mean, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I don't have a. We used to be told cigarettes were good for us. We didn't, but there was a time when they said. Uh, technically, I mean, if you want to think about it, nicotine, like it makes your brain numb, and that right now that might be good for us. <laughs> right, true. <laughs> so, I mean, we used to be told marijuana was the gateway drug, and now it's legal in half the states, right? Yeah. So, well, it's still the gateway drug. Actually, the gateway drug is sugar. And then caffeine. Exactly. And then alcohol and then marijuana <laughs> and then whatever you want after that. Right. And if you'll notice, like during COVID, you still had access to all your sugar, all your caffeine, all your alcohol. Oh, yeah. And all your marijuana. Like, got to keep the essentials up. Yeah. Right? <laughs> right? Yeah. Health clubs, not essential. Yeah. Liquor stores, 
better yeah. open those doors. Mitch is gonna is gonna beat the health thing to death. I mean, every episode <laughs> I feel like he's like, yeah, you're all a bunch of fat fucks. So you got to get in shape, and I I agree with him 100. percent Yeah, you should. You should. You should be in shape. I mean, it's just another angle where the government does not have your best interest. No, they don't and, have and your it, best interest. I mean, that was painfully heart. obvious whenever there are yeah. you, liquor stores are allowed to stay open, but health clubs have you, to close. You want to have people's best interest in mind. Give tax deductions for health memberships. Yeah. Okay. When if you have a health club membership and you wear a Fitbit, you should be able to document that time, and it should come off your health insurance. Okay, your government health insurance. Let's just go even farther. Your tax bracket is based off your BMI. Well, you Holy can't do that. Holy fuck! You can't do that because some people do have a high BMI because of health issues, of just the way they were born. Yeah. I mean. It's well, it's, your, a, it's a curve. I mean, there's is. fifteen on e, fifteen percent on each end. I'm, you know, right. But I mean, if a doctor said, "Hey, this is where you're really at," right? You know, you do have a health problem. You could there could be considerations for that. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I mean, the, the health insurance can raise your rates because of BMI. Yeah. You know, they can they, deny they your coverage can. because of BMI. Right. I mean, so. You know, maybe you're onto something there. Yeah, smoker, non-smoker. Oh, rate change. Yep, BMI too high. Right, rate and, change. And so, what's crazy is we're all paying into Medicare. Yeah, and Medicaid. Right. So if I have to pay into it, then why shouldn't I have to pay more or less based off of my BMI? Because you're willing to work at it. Right. Yeah. No, like, I agree. You you don't have to convince me. Yeah. I'm with you. So those those are all things that a person could put together to uh, again transfer more accountability back onto the citizen and less reliance onto the government. Um, but instead, no, it has to be you're fine the way you are. Yeah. No. Yeah. It, no, you're not. You're instead, a fat we have ass. to throw out some bullshit called body positivity, where we're embracing obesity that will actually kill somebody someday. Yeah, you're not helping that individual. Yeah. You need to like you need to be like, look, dude, I know you're happy and everything's cool. But you're going to die soon, so yeah. get off your ass. Yeah. Do something about it. Yep. But all that gets hidden under the idea of mental health, right? Maybe you're affecting their mental health if you call them fat. Yeah, but you're not affecting my mental health when I go into the ladies' locker room with my daughter and your fucking dick's hanging out. <laughs> That's not affecting her mental health at all. I mean, the, the hey, hypocrisy. Just make sure you use the right pronouns. There are two pronouns, <laughs> him and her, and the rest is bullshit. His his pronoun is idiot. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. There's <laughs> three. Idiot. There's three. Him, her, and fucking idiots. That's all there is. There it is. I mean, it just the hypocrisy that I have to worry about his mental health because he thinks he's a woman and yep. wants his junk out in a women's locker room is more important than my nine year old daughter's mental health for going into a locker room that's supposed to be all girls and then sees the swinging dick yeah. is the biggest hypocrisy, I mean, that has ever been out in the open in front of humankind, I yep. mean, in history. It's it's unbelievably stupid. I just don't... What's funny is you'll, you would never see... <laughs> you wouldn't see that happen here. And the reason why is because, just like you had said earlier, somebody is going to handle that in the way they best see fit. And that's going to be high-speed lead poisoning. And and you can get away with that in states like Washington and in Oregon and in California and all of that stuff. You can't get away with it in in Republican states. You know what? You're probably right. You're, I mean, in, in, I wouldn't be surprised if something like that still doesn't happen in a case oh, like I that. Oh, I guarantee you. I, I tell so, you right now, if like – so my daughter plays – soccer in a competitive league and so the bathrooms are like literally you go in and it's a locker room for men it's a locker room for women like there's not showers and everything but they're big you know if she came out to me like we talk about it okay we talk about stuff if she came out to me and was like dad there was a boy in there and i saw his penis or he did this or I'm walking in there and beating that guy to death. Right. I mean, literally beating that guy to death yeah. and not even thinking twice about it. Nope. And then literally walking out and telling Janine to call the cops and saying, I'm probably going to jail for a long time. Right. Because that dude's fucking dead. Yeah. I mean, I just, I don't think that I could control myself in that situation 
I, I just don't think I could do it. Right. I just don't. Right. I mean, I don't know what else to say. I mean, you you see guys you see guys fly off the handle with that all the time. You, a courtroom where a murderer, like a, a father, is having to watch a murderer stand trial for murdering their son or molest their daughter. Yeah, and and you'll watch the the dad like run across the courtroom and just start beating the shit out of him. It's yeah. his first opportunity that he's had yeah. to you know. And, and dude, you can't you that, can't fault that guy. That one guy bit. shouldn't go to jail. Hell no. You should get a free fucking shot. You should get if you want to regulate like crime in this country. When stuff like that happens, yeah, just say okay, free it's, for all. It's you and the dad in the room for ten minutes, yeah. And if wh- whoever comes out is just the victor, and that's just how it is. And if we want to raise some money to get out of government debt, anybody else, it's a dollar a minute for as long as you want. First off, if I'm there with the ten minutes, that guy's dead. <laughs> three. I mean, I just, I there's, it just the insanity yeah. that that you would say no, it's okay. For that to happen to right. a child, yeah, it just that's I can't even fathom, right, right, and, and, then, and then try feel. to make the other person feel like they're in the wrong. Well, yeah, and and tell that dude that's in the women's locker room with his penis out, he's a hero. Yeah, what kind of fucking insanity are we living in? Right, that's why you have to be a very good shepherd to your children. And let them know what reality is rather than what the media is trying to tell them it is. Yeah. And, and what their schools, it, not, not all schools are bad. Our schools, my particular, the two schools that my kids are in, they're they're good. Um, but um, you still have to be checking up on that and finding out what kind of information the schools are giving them as well. Yeah. Because sometimes you have to course correct that information too. Yeah. So it all starts with your own house and your own kids and making sure they're pointed off in the right direction yeah. from teach there. Your, teach your daughters how to eye gouge. That's what we talk about all the time. There you go. Layla, if someone, what happens if someone grabs you? I, I literally will ask her, what do you do? And she holds her thumb up. Yeah. So what are we doing right with that thumb? And she holds it to her own eye. Yeah. I said, until that thing comes out, yeah. that's what we do, right? Yeah. You dig that thing and out we, of their and, head. And what else do we do? We scream until we can't scream anymore, right? Yeah. 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 I mean, you just... The fact that we're at that place where you literally have to just worry about your kid going into the bathroom and coming out, right. like when you're standing at the door for five minutes. Like, I worry the whole five minutes. I'm, I'm literally standing there like, oh, shit. Okay. It, make, it makes you wonder if, if, it, if maybe there's not a civil war, there's such a, a polarization where it's like if you're from a red state – and you're traveling through a blue state, it's almost like you're going to like a foreign country. You're just like, okay, well, I think I guess they have masks here. Okay, be careful because there might be, be like over in Europe. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's instead of states, it's passports, small countries. Passports, passports, and borders. I think, and I think Mitch might be right. I mean, I think you know maybe it, all it takes is like Texas to say we're out. You know, they used to threaten it all the time in the '90s. Mm-hmm. We're gonna we're gonna annex and we're gonna be our own country. Right. If they did that now. There'd be fucking 20 states that said, okay, we're with you. Yeah. And literally, there would be a mass shift in population with no war. And really, the only thing that's keeping them from doing that is the reliance on federal funds. So if they could if they could find a way to run their budget without federal funds, well, to, to it be, would happen like Texas that. Texas is a self-sufficient state. Yeah. But other states aren't. Right. Mm-hmm. But you're right. If they could figure out a way to band together with three states that could do that on their own and say, hey, right. if we got together and these other states came here and we could say, hey, we're going to do that. I guarantee, I mean, the red states would be so full yeah. and the blue states would be, I, we'd have a wall put up in three weeks. <laughs> I'd donate my time. I'd be like, here's my tool belt. Where do I go? Right. I mean, we'd have that thing put up so quick. It would happen. Mm. So we'd probably let Mexico be part of it. Who knows? We might see something similar to that in our lifetime. You just don't know. I hope we do. Yeah. I'm bored. <laughs> I'm bored. Let's fucking <laughs> do something. And so it's almost like now is that the precursor. You kind of have people who are warring with their feet, so to speak. They're like just traveling to whatever state that they're do aligning people, with. Yeah. yeah. People yeah, are yeah, doing yeah. it all the time. Yeah, I, you're you're seeing that more and more, especially with COVID, because, again, you saw all those people come up with all those crazy-ass rules. And and people were able to, like, I mean, you saw it magnified that, okay, we can't unify to keep these people from coming up with the rules, so I'm going to take the control in my own hands, and I'm going to go to a state that agrees with, that, that I agree with their values. If we didn't, I'm telling you what, if Janine and I didn't have a kid, we would have moved to Florida already, yeah. or Texas. We'd have been gone. Yeah. Just packed up and been like, you know what, we'll sell it all, start over. Right. And go somewhere where it's not 
insanity right all my, the time my brother-in-law and sister they're just like that's like their goal is florida it's i, I mean how could you not want desantis as your governor right that's a badass <laughs> didn't he just crack down on like a, a like a, a woke lawyer or something so, no like some prosecutor, prosecutor just literally sorry. said i'm gonna prosecute what i want despite what the law says and he came out and said no one in this state is above the laws we have you're fired Mm-hmm. And I think he's going to go in front of – I think the way that that works is that he goes in front of either the state house or whatever, and they decide if he's canned or, or what. Right. But, he, but he's right. You're not above the law. No. You can't just make your own fucking rules, dude. They, they mm. did it for two years through COVID. I know. And that's the, that's know. the problem. And that's the problem. And somebody's got to rein it in, which is why we talked about – I don't know if it was during a show po- or before – when I was saying, you know, if Trump was president and DeSantis was VP, I'd take it. If DeSantis ran for mm-hmm. president and Hawley was VP, I mean, I think they'd just be a great tandem. I mean, right. that, just come out there and say, no, that ain't how it works, and this is what we're going to do. Yeah, right. maybe, maybe a part of it is it's going to take someone who comes in in the office as president and says, you know what, I'm going to be focusing the energy on making sure we have less power. Well, that's what Trump wanted. And look, yeah. look what it got him. Right. Yeah. It's just it, the thing is too is like there was also like big spending, so it would have to be. Oh like, yeah. Okay, he we're not, he we're, spent out his ass. That's he the thing. Spent it, way too much money. That's, that's like, typical we're, Republican. We're, yeah. It's going to have to be like, hey, we're actually going to be cutting our own power. We're not going to be giving people pelotons and spinning out the wazoo on whatever. We're actually going to be. The thing is too, if if a position doesn't have power, then it's probably less likely that's going to get corrupted. Yeah. Well, you know, he spent money and the budget was crazy, but then fucking Slippery Joe got in there and made it look like a campfire in comparison to a four-alarm blaze of an apartment building. I yeah, remember- re- Republicans borrow money and Democrats tax the people. So, I mean, there's really – they're both wrong in the fact that they're spending more than they have. Yeah, Democrats and especially like – young kids that vote for Democrat, they think there's just a big giant room full of money and that the government can just give it out. And yeah. they don't they don't know how that money's replenished. Right. They're not sure how it got there. And then they hit forty and they're like, oh fuck. That was my money. <laughs> that was my money. And now they want more of it. Yeah. Yeah. That's well, where it comes from, people. Right. Pay attention. Well just how the media treats remember whenever like Trump decided to work through COVID and it was like, oh we don't know. But now it's like Biden, he's working through COVID. He's a strong president. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's again, <laughs> your media controlling the narrative of stories and yeah. writing the shape yeah. of history, right? I think what they should do is Kamala Harris and Joe Biden should get in a UFC ring, <laughs> and it should be to the death. Like, whichever one wins is the president, and the other one's just dead. I don't want Kamala as a president. I don't want either no. one of them. <laughs> she couldn't be worse. That's the thing. Is to be honest. Yeah, the, we give true. them both a four-inch knife and say, let's see what happens. The, the thing <laughs> is, to see who fucking wins. The Democrat with the highest, quote-unquote, approval or light rating is Pete Buttigieg at like 40% or something like that. It's the last <laughs> I heard. We're just like, great. The highest, like, you know. No one likes any of them. <laughs> right. It's a train wreck. That's the thing, too, is like you have, yeah, if something happens, God forbid, Joe Biden, like I'm not wishing death on anybody, but you have Kamala I am. Harris. I'm wishing that when that f- freaking, uh, uh, what was that judge that just died here not too long ago? What was that lady that had like a head on killer? Oh, well, no, uh, Justice. Not her. Uh, Ruth Gator, Bader yeah. Ginsburg, when oh, she yeah. died, I yeah. was like, good. Next. Right. Next. Next. Right. I it, dissent. It's just kind of like what's yeah. down the pipeline. So it's like, say if something happens to him and it's cackle bridges, it's like, it's it's going to be like t- really terrible for two years, but I feel like... It can't be worse than the first two, no matter what happens. It can't be. Right. I mean, what could be worse? She just says to China or Russia, just come and take it. We'll give it to you. That's the only thing that could be worse. I just don't know that she's like willing to tackle anything head on. Like I think it's just going to be like more and more train wreck. It's like it's going to be so train wreck where you can't really distinguish the two. It's going to be like, still wow. going to be worse. It's going to be train wreck. I don't know. It's. I mean, it's. I don't think Biden's really attacked anything head on. No. Mm-hmm. Other than the pavement different. off a bicycle. It's almost just like you're running in the wrong <laughs> Too direction. Bad his head didn't bleed out. Like this way, and then Kamala takes it and runs the wrong direction, like 15 degrees, like to the left. Right. Just, just like Austin said a little bit, he was like, "I don't. W- I'm not wishing death on anyone." Like that's the Republican mantra. 
You right. know what I mean? Like the Republican mantra is we're good people. We, we don't want to wish death on people. We're well, not going to fight dirty. We're not going to do that. There are times where you have to wish death on people. I want, That's the only way change happens. The Democrats and the super left have been wishing death on us and trying to get it on us and trying to take this country by force right. for a vo- very long time. And we've all just been standing around doing nothing. Right. I mean, people have got to wake up. Austin, wake up, bro. You're too fat. <laughs> fat. Wake up. I yep. mean, you can't just take it. They, I mean, there's just, you can only take it for so long yeah. before you got to do something about it. Yep. I don't know when, what's going to happen. And, I'm, I'm like Mitch. I think there'll just be a divide. And, and it won't be civil when states. it happens. There, there is, I think we're far enough down the path that there will not be a civil correction to this. It will be massive. It will be ugly. And it will be very uncivil. I don't but think it's so. going to take actions like that in order to get the the result deep enough and far enough to actually make change. But right now, the only thing I see civil actions, the only thing I see civilly that's happening, it might change course momentarily, but it doesn't run deep enough to fix the root cause. Well, if if Texas were to say we're going to be our own state, and literally within two weeks. Ten other states said, yeah, we're going with them. I think it would be civil. Well, I don't know. You think the government's going to attack us? You think the government would try to get their army together? And I, do you think that every member that lives in those states is going to fight their own statesmen? I, no. I, I don't think that's going to happen civilly. I, don't, I, do not think, I, mean, you, I, don't, I do not think that if they called up the reservists and the military and said, hey, Texas said they're going to annex... Right. If they're from Texas or any red states, I don't think that they're picking up arms to battle Texas. I don't no, I don't necessarily think it's going to go like that, but I mean you look at just for the very exact reason of how America got founded. We basically said fuck you. And we went to war and we founded ourselves a nation, right? I think that's how America fixes this. As you get a a large enough group of people that say fuck you, and we go to war against the American government, and we create ourselves a nation. I think that's the only way you fix it. I mean, look at it. America didn't go and try to, like, <coughs> fix things at Independence Day. They said, fuck you, and made our own. And and I think that's, I think that's what but happens in the future. Go, they didn't go to war with England. They said, fuck you, and then England came here. Right. So if so if all the states got together and said, "Hey, no, we're doing this. Get bent." I'm not so sure that there would be a war. Yeah, I don't know. I I think too some of it a lot of this is course correcting just because people are coming to terms and I feel like I feel like this to be true a little bit where it's like it just kind of seems like people have had enough with cancel culture and they're kind of seeing through this whole like trains the kids thing it's that's myopic thinking you think people have had enough of cancel culture because you've had enough of it Mm -hmm. i guarantee you that there are a lot of people that have not had enough with cancel culture and you're actually going to see it go the other way Mm -hmm. where you've got republicans that are against cancel culture that are actually probably going to start recommending cancel culture Mm -hmm. you're going to see somebody that was so against like we've talked about this before the the notion that you're so against something that you become exactly what you're against Mm-hmm. You're going to see somebody like Republicans don't like cancel culture until all of a sudden they realize that they can use it to their advantage and then mm-hmm. they're going to be all about it. Right. And it's just a matter of opinion. So it's I mean, events like an 80 or the 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 woman being banned from the YMCA mm-hmm. tell you that society is not fed up with cancel culture because they're still pushing back, and they're still pushing yeah. back. So, it has it has waned off. It's it's I, starting it's starting to wane off. But yeah, we'll it's see, not we'll that see. it's it's not that it's waned off. It's that it's become so commonplace that it's not even uh, talked about in the media anymore. When it first came around, every incident in, incidence of it was talked about in the media as cancel culture this and cancel culture that, and someone else has been canceled and someone else has been canceled and and all this kind of stuff. Well, now the same actions are happening. Only it's just so commonplace that we don't even call it being canceled anymore. It's just 
I don't even see any of that much of it anymore. Well, dude, there's also this thing too, and I was talking about with someone else is like, it, it kind of feels like from every generation, it's like there's always the person that's like, oh, I don't know where, how, how we're gonna like come out of this. I'm like, I'm pretty for sure that people were having the same conversation in yeah. 1945 and in 1960 and in 1970 with, yeah. you know, you have the commies, the commie movement coming in. It just, I feel like it's one of those things where it's like, how far can you say? Oh, this is. We're really going into it, but just yeah. like, you know, every generation I feel like has had that. America's been fucked up for years. And so. And and it ain't going to change anytime soon. That's why I'm I'm kind of on uh, with like David on like the Civil War thing. I, I don't know if it is needed for this type of course correction because it's like we've course corrected civilly before. Like we've I mean, moved I past would, it. I say that I don't think that that's what will happen, but mm. if it does, I'm ready. Mm. Right. I mean, I'm. I'm first one on the battlefield. I I'm, I'm just I don't know of a nation in history if it goes 10 that more went years, way down a wrong path and was I'm able old. to course correct and come out of it without like physical violence and wars happening or an overtaking of government of some kind. Do you yeah. think it's maybe I, I don't know if that's ever happened in history where it's like okay this company this country was so close to losing it but hey they all rallied together and they figured it out. Well, I'm sure there's been some. Or maybe there's not an actual war, but there's some sort of thing like you have like, you know, like the the whole like Boston Tea Party thing where it's like maybe it's just one event where there's like a shootout. Yeah, maybe. I, I mean, you, the idea of unity in the nation is impossible. You will never have unity when you have this many different opinions and when you have this many ways to get the opinions out. Uh, the idea of peace in a nation is impossible because with freedom comes chaos. Mm -hmm. There is no peace in freedom. Um, there is, there is more peaceful times, but there is no true peace when mm -hmm. you have freedom. Uh, freedom to choose means some people are going to choose ways that you disagree with. And that in itself is non peaceful. So, um, I mean, the, America the, is kind of designed sort of that way to be sort of like this, you know, little chaotic controlled chaoticness yeah and, and the like, more freedom you push for the less peace you're going to have and the more chaos you're going to have I I that's just is what it is i miss the 90s you ever just miss when it was easier yeah mm. i don't i don't know if it was Young. easier or we just didn't know any better that's, that's, fucking, that's, i'll take either one <laughs> yeah. ignorance, I'll take, ignorance is bliss i'll take whatever you got yeah, I, yeah. it's almost like i i have this battle where i'm like i want to stay updated but at the same time i do miss when i was younger and like didn't even know who was president at the time, and it was like you know, right? Yeah, you right. you have all the adults being like, oh, this and that, and like you, all you're worried about is just freaking playing tag and sh you know shooting someone with the air watching Bill gun. Clinton play a saxophone on the David Letterman show. It was Arsenio Hall. Oh, it was Arsenio Hall. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, ooh. ooh. Yep. <laughs> the good old days, man. The hey, this good old uh, days. This show's run pretty long. Yeah, that's like minus ten. I know. We should wrap it up. So, <laughs> uh, obviously, late. we can we can ramble on about this for quite some time. So, uh, guys, if you liked what you heard on the show, please do us a favor and help share the show with somebody else who might want to hear it. Uh, this was obviously a beyond the void show, a less less business minded, more social topics, and how to navigate this crazy world that we live in. So, uh, until next time, guys, we will see you later. Peace.